In the 17th century, in a small village on the fringes of Eastern Europe, a series of strange events took place. This was one of the earliest documented accounts of corpses that rose from the dead, drinking their victims' blood and eating the flesh off their bones. This story converges with a chilling discovery made by archaeologists in modern times, which awakened some of humanity's deepest rooted fears and shed more light on an elusive creature which to this day is believed to still haunt certain remote parts of Eastern Europe and is known in folklore as the Strigoi. Located in what is modern-day Croatia, in the ancient region of Istria, the village of Kringa was a good place to live. The sunny summer skies and the mild winters, tempered by the Mediterranean breeze, made it an idyllic location. The daily activities of the Kringans revolved around farming, and most of their time was spent tending to their animals and working the land, in order to sell their produce at the local market and in the surrounding towns. When the night came and darkness fell over the land, the villagers would retreat in their homes to rest from the day's work and spend time with their families. Others would gather at the local tavern, singing, dancing and playing games. This picturesque way of life was about to change, as tragedy and horror would replace the carefree life of the people of Kringa and would last for 16 long years, decimating the small village. Located in the western part of Ireland, Kiltishin is a mountainous region which has long been known to be the place where fairies and spirits dwell. In 2004, a team of archaeologists began excavations under the remains of what they believed to be a 12th century bishop's castle. While unearthing the site and removing the heavy stones paving the floor, they came face to face with a collection of crushed human skulls, which stared directly at them from a dark and haunted past. Within a very small area, the team unearthed close to 40 skeletons, which had been piled up in graves and buried, before the heavy stone structure was laid on top. As the excavations continued, Close to 2,500 corpses were found, making it clear to the archaeologists they had discovered an ancient cemetery. What they uncovered next would shake them to their very core. It was a discovery that challenges the very fabric of our beliefs and brought them face to face with one of humanity's most deeply rooted fears, that of the undead. As the year 1655 approaches its end, a man by the name of Jura Grando Alivovich is put to his eternal rest. Having died from illness, his widow and children leave his grave weeping, believing he was taken by God to his rightful afterlife. Not much is known about Jura Alivovich's life, but the few accounts that cross time through the legends of the Croatian folklore say he was a troubled soul. 
He was known among the villagers of Kringa as an unpleasant character, drinking alone in a dark corner of the local tavern. Many were weary of Jur, as rumors of him having sold his soul to the devil started to circulate early in his life. His end began with a strange illness, which left Jura weak and powerless. As the days passed, he grew weaker and weaker, until he finally died. Some villagers mourned his passing and held a funeral procession in his honor. But despite not expressing it out loud, the truth was, most of the villagers were relieved that Jura was gone, and they didn't have to deal with the uneasiness his presence gave them. But this would be short-lived, as soon after his passing, strange things began to occur in the village. Not long after Jura's death, a dark figure could be seen wandering the edge of the village after nightfall. The villagers would often be awakened from their sleep by knocking on their doors and the sound of startled animals. Soon, the villagers started finding their animals had been killed in a gruesome manner and fear began to spread throughout the community. Every night they would hear the heart-wrenching noises while they barricaded themselves in their houses. Screams and shouts occasionally pierced what were once tranquil nights, but wandering off into the darkness to investigate wasn't high on anyone's list. It didn't take long for rumors to spread, and tales of the mysterious hauntings started to circulate throughout Kringa, but also in the surrounding towns. The elders spoke of a legend, a dark spirit that possesses its victims, and after they die, takes control of its corpse, coming back from the dead and thirsty for blood. As the weeks turned into months, the unthinkable happened. On a morning after a particularly eventful night, the villagers found the lifeless bodies of a young mother and her two children, torn apart and drained of all their blood. Events such as this continued throughout the years with many of the villagers and their families falling prey to the creature. One day, during mass at the village church, the villagers could no longer hold their fear and frustration in. As they knelt in prayer, one villager stood up and cried out, Someone came and knocked on my door once again last night. Another villager shouted, It's the devil we've been cursed. The priest, Father Giorgio, tried to comfort the panicking crowd. We need to pray. The Lord will protect us from this evil. But the villagers were beyond consoling. Another said to the priest, We have been praying and praying, Father, but I believe today that the Lord has forsaken Kringa. The church was filled with the sounds of the villagers shouting and talking over each other in terror and despair. The once peaceful place of worship had become a symbol of their hopelessness and fear. As the crowd slowly left the church, only a lone figure was left seated in the shadows at the very back, her face obscured in the flickering candlelight. The woman slowly rose from her seat and made her way towards the priest. She finally stood before him. It was Yura Grando's widow. In a hushed voice, she said, Father, I need to confess. I know this evil and where it came from. I am so ashamed. She continued bursting in tears. It's Jura, father. It is him. He is a Strigoi. He comes at night. If you have made it this far in the video, consider supporting my work with a quick tap on the like button. I try to post a video every month, so subscribe if you like this type of mystery content. Now back to our story. At the archaeological site in Kiltiashan, the team stumbled upon a discovery that would send chills down their spines. The morning mist had barely lifted when they came upon a skeleton unlike any they had ever seen. This was no ordinary grave, but a desperate attempt to keep the dead from rising. 
The body they unearthed had its twisted and mangled remains bound tightly to a massive boulder. The interesting discovery was just the beginning as many more deviant burials would be found in the following days. The archaeologists made another surprising discovery as they kept excavating. The next body they uncovered had a large stone lodged firmly within its mouth. Another one had been completely nailed to a wooden plank, most likely the bottom of a coffin. Long nails driven through its right and left shoulders, through its heart, and also its mouth. These were unique finds, unlike anything the team had ever encountered before. The sight of this dramatic image was both awe-inspiring and perplexing. The question was, why were these bodies treated with such violence? The archaeologists removed the three skeletons, along with more than a hundred other burials. As the bones were analyzed, a horrifying truth began to emerge. The skeletons showed signs of severe injuries, indicating that they had been brutally mistreated after they had died. This was clear evidence that in medieval times, the belief in vampires was not limited to folklore and legend, but was a very real fear among people. We get quite vivid accounts in the 12th century about revenants. Um, they are often returning to the place where they lived, and they are often waking up their neighbours at night and telling them to come out or calling people they know by name. The discoveries made in Kiltershan directly linked to events that took place in the village of Kringa almost 350 years earlier. A dark cloud had set over the once peaceful village of Kringa. What used to be a thriving community now only counted a handful of people. Some had left, others had fell prey to the creature. The once busy streets were now abandoned and the local market was empty. It was at this peak of desperation that it was decided to do something once and for all. Digging up a grave was seen as a heretical act, but after Jura's widow had revealed to Father Giorgio the horrible things the Strigoi had done to her, and with mounting pressure from the remaining Kringans, the priest finally gave his blessing for Jura's body to be unearthed. Some of the strongest and bravest men from the village went to the graveyard at the edges of town. While Father Giorgio was praying, they dug up the grave where Jure Grando laid. As they removed the lid from the coffin, they were shocked by what they saw. His body had contorted in an unrecognizable way. Suddenly, the lifeless corpse began to stir. The startled men jumped back in terror. Father Giorgio's trembling prayers echoed through the stillness of the cemetery. Dear Lord, protect us from this evil. Let our faith prevail. With a sickening crunch, the creature's eyes snapped open, fixating on the priest with a twisted grin. In a flash, it lurched to its feet, its movements jerky and disjointed, like a marionette controlled by a malevolent force. Give that stake to me, one man shouted. I'll stab it through its dreaded heart. The stake pierced the creature which let out a terrifying growl that pierced the dark night. Another villager grabbed his axe and swang at the creature with all his might. Jura's head came straight off and rolled to Father Giorgio's feet. As he fell back into the coffin, the villagers didn't waste any time. The village blacksmith took out his hammer and proceeded to nail the corpse to the bottom of the coffin, driving his nails through the shoulders, the hands and the legs. A very large stone was pushed into the grave in order to ensure Jura would never, ever raise again from the dead. If you travel to Kringa today, you will find a small, picturesque and quiet village with fewer than 300 inhabitants. Close to the city center, you will find an old church said to be where Father Giorgio received Jure Grando's widow's confession and where the brave villagers came together to defeat the Strigoi. On the outskirts of the village, traces of the old cemetery still remain with the bodies buried there over the years having finally found their peace. 
Jura Grando is known as the oldest European vampire with a name attached to him. His story is the first of its kind to have been found in written documents, and it has intrigued researchers for years. The skeletons found in Kiltashin by the archaeological team were not the only ones. All across Western, Central and Eastern Europe, similar deviant burial sites have been uncovered. These discoveries open a portal toward a dark time in human existence, where superstition was part of everyday life. The legend of Jura Grando has been the inspiration for some of the most terrifying creatures in contemporary horror. Even now, the dreadful fate that befell Jure after his burial continues to evoke fear in us through romanticized depictions of vampires and zombies in television and cinema. While to our modern society such stories are viewed as mere entertainment, beliefs in the dead rising after they've been buried are still held by people in remote parts of Eastern Europe. To guard against these creatures, people have developed and practiced various rituals which have been passed down through folklore and continue to be an important part of the local culture and identity to this day.